Can you spread warm oil across your body? There we go. What's up, man? Nice What's to finally up? connect with you. Been trying to get on your radar for a while now. How we doing? I'm doing great. What about yourself? I'm doing wonderful. I think you've got some serious skills, man. Thank you. Zach, thank you for the badge. I appreciate it, man. All but, right. But, uh, but how do you answer the questions about how pyrolysis is a failed 100-year-old technology that has never worked? Billions of dollars have been spent trying to commercialize it. And I've been fighting against pyrolysis for the past 20 years because we have a system that actually does what we says it does. So, so, you're, so what you're proposing is you're saying that how am I um, say, saying that I want to expand a field that you're saying has been a failed field for hundreds yeah, of years? Yeah, my, my question is how are you making pyrolysis any different than the last hundred other companies that are currently doing pyrolysis, spending billions of dollars a year on research. Mm -hmm. And I, dude, you got skills, you got serious skills. So there's no doubt that you're going to make major differences on this planet. But I think you need some direction because pyrolysis isn't the answer. And with that beautiful reactor you've built in your yard, you can do a different process in there. If you just learn the key steps on how to remove those bad actors before you put it through your pyrolysis system, you convert that pyrolysis system into a pressurized thermal cracker. You use some hydrothermal liquefaction on the front end, utilizing water as your catalyst. You can remove all the bad actors, the chlorinated compounds, the heavy metals, and all the toxic compounds from the waste. So you're, you're talking you about hydrolysis, correct? It, it's a form of hydrolysis, more okay. hydrothermal liquefaction. Hydrothermal liquefaction. I've, I've done some research of hybrid, hydrothermal carbonization. It's um, well, and similar, I'm sure it's quite but not similar, quite but you're adding water into yours, right? Yeah. So check so out, out some I'll, patents I'll start, by changing world technology. I'll stop answering sure. your question so I don't get too uh, convoluted here. So to answer your initial question, what makes what I'm doing different? Because just so everybody knows, I do not invent pyrolysis. There are companies that already do pyrolysis, plastic in the fuel, tires in the fuel. What makes what I'm doing different? Well, in fact, I didn't even invent microwave pyrolysis, right? So what makes me different? And there are microwave pyrolysis plants too. What makes what I'm doing different? Well, for one, I am doing microwave pyrolysis, which is not as common at all on an industrial scale. But all of the, uh, you could say, the bigger industrial pyrolysis plants that run off of microwaves. Sure. Something I noticed that they don't have is there, there's yet to have been one that is scalable on a big level and is also continuous, right? So this design... Well, actually not this design in particular, but I have a specific design that has not been seen yet. There's going to be a design uh, that I'm going to make of a microwave pyrolysis reactor that is industrially scalable and continuously in operation. And my hypothesis is that if I build a, a, a microwave pyrolysis reactor that's at an industrial scale, it'll be efficient enough to pretty much, it'll, may, it'll have such a high output compared to the input, it'll be able to cover all the things that we have to do like the refinement process. So it's a hypothesis. Sure. But, but still, how do you remove the chlorinated compounds, the mercuries, the sulfurs, all the bad actors that are present, right? Okay. How do you process PVC? Well, because PVC is one of those, those plastics that when you put it into your system, drops your pH to a level that will consume all your metals. Right. So you, you, got, you got some issues there. And if so you that's use true. It, that's true. And I will say. Uh, firstly, so PVC is something that I'm still doing my research on. I do have some potential uh, remedies. I will get to that in a second. But to answer sulfur, plastics don't really have sulfur in them. You know, the, uh, most, uh, most of the plastics are part of the purification process to remove the sulfur, right? Oh, now, sure. tires do, right? So, anyways, to go to PVC, because that is a great question, right? So, I'm still doing my own uh, research on this because I have never put PVC in my machines for such reasons. I have done some research on using calcium oxide or lime as a catalyst to react with the chlorine gas to form calcium oxide. But of course, there's, you got to make sure, like, how is it, is it getting all of it, you know? So that way it doesn't get to the machine and then mess up things. But I also did research that when you put pyrolysis or when you do pyrolysis of PVC, the first thing that comes off of the PVC actually is the chlorine gas before the PVC itself actually even breaks down. So with that, there's potential to have some type of bed or some type of layer that can uh, of calcium oxide or lime that could potentially interact with it. So that's something I have to figure out sure. and I'm still figuring that out, but I don't think it's an impossibility. So if you use hydrothermal liquefaction, those chlorinated compounds break down and end up in your water phase and you don't even release them as a gas. So that's something mm -hmm. that you, you should definitely explore mm -hmm. 
even if it's a small scale hydrolysis system on the front end, you can capture some of the waste heat produced by your system mm -hmm. and use it to, to heat your hydrolysis reactor. So you're able to break down those harmful okay. compounds. So, so with that being said, do you think that it will be a similar reaction if, let's say I put PVC in my machine, right? I also put water in there, sure. right? Would that water end up becoming steam? And as the PVC breaks down, the steam and the chlorine would form the uh, chlorinated you water, got, essentially. Uh, it's got to be under pressure. So your hydrolysis needs to be operating mm -hmm. between 700 and 800 PSI. So you keep those reactions in, in the water phase, right? You don't allow it to go to that next phase of steam. You keep it in the water phase. And what you're able to do is create what's called a hydrogen shift reaction, mm -hmm. where you create three hydrogen molecules that slam into the, the double and triple bonded carbons, and you're able to break those chains down. So that, that's what the research has been done over the last 30 years that my father started pioneering in 1997. And my family's been on the forefront of this for 30 years, which is why I'm so passionate about it, I guess you For can sure, say. for sure. And you know what? I really appreciate that because I'll say this. There's no one size fits all for anything, right? Think about how many different processes there are even for different landfills and how they sure. do things. I think about it like this, right? I made these machines. My goal of even why I do all this is to get rid of ocean plastics. Most ocean plastics are not PVC. Most ocean plastics are not halogenated for that matter, right? So Agreed. perhaps this is just for the commonplace plastics, the HDPEs, the polypropylenes, the polystyrenes. But perhaps then we have the PVCs, the PTFEs go to a process, as you say, that you work on, right? So it doesn't have to be all in one. Sure. It can be that, you know, this could be a big bulk machine for that because my research I have done on, you know, the high pressure things like the, um, the hydrothermal carbonization, I, I haven't yet to see a really big industrial one of those created now correct me if i'm wrong do those exist right now i don't know but they have in the past you can check out changing world technologies carthage missouri facility we had a 250 ton per day facility operating processing butterball turkey off it. so if you implement some form of hydrothermal liquefaction on the front end mm -hmm. you'll be able to convert far more than just plastics so our eden energy process can convert all carbon-based waste in a wet and mixed stream. So you don't even have to worry about drying it as much. You don't need a dry material because you're able to break down those compounds. And if you use a pressurized thermal crack, right? Change your pyrolysis system into mm -hmm. a thermal cracker where you convert it under pressure, you'll be able to break all those heterocyclic rings as well. So the fuel that comes out will be much lighter, much better quality, and won't have a lot of the problems that you have when you do your fractional distillations that you run into with right. pyrolytic fuel oil. That makes sense. That makes sense. So then here's the next question, right? Because I have considered this as well. Because, you know, of course, with more heat, with more pressure, it means more heat. So when you have a higher pressure, you also have to put in less energy to break things down, which will make the process more efficient. So, of course, your, your process is very efficient. And I was actually looking into pressures for the same thing here. At home, I don't want to ever mess with that because that would be very dangerous. Yeah. With, uh, doing this by home, but I always had the theory of what about if I basically made a high pressure microwave pyrolysis reactor, right? You know, then it, according to what you're saying, that would have more benefits than just efficiency alone. 100% because you're going to have a much better fuel quality on the back end. Your biochar will be much higher quality uh, and you'll be able to, to produce more because you're using less inputs. So less right. energy in, more energy out. We, right. we, we're at our process right now, last third party validation we had done was 92%. The upgrades that we've made, our engineers think will be over 110% energy efficient. So a net energy producer. Congratulations, man. That, that's very exciting. So I think that uh, ironically, you kind of answered the, your initial question yourself by just our conversation here. You see, the reason why I do this, I, I've done research. I know that it's been failed, you could say. I do, I continue to pioneer because I believe that truly if you really just think outside the box and just keep trying different things, you have the right type of conversations, there's a way to do anything, right? Sure. Every problem has yeah. a solution. And the petrochemical world and the technology has been around for so long, you know, because this process, you know all about it. It's not very far from refining crude oil, right? Nope. It's very, very similar to fractional distillation, destructive distillation, right? So, sure. you know, that's why I even try it. And like I said, it's a hypothesis. We'll have to see. But, you know, there's so many different avenues to go down. 
I, I believe that, that I can figure out something to get plastic waste dealt with in a better way. So that's why I do this. Well, one thing I'm very happy to do is I'm always, we'll connect offline, you and I, and I'm happy to be a sounding board for any ideas you've had. I've been very blessed in my life because my father is a world-renowned scientist, and I've gotten to do research at some of the world's top facilities with some of the world's top scientists since I was a little kid. So I've been given opportunities. So my goal is to give back to the world. So any assistance I can provide, any knowledge that I have that I can transfer to you, I'm more than happy to share it because that's the goal. At the end of the day, we're not going to patent our process flow because we'll never be able to produce enough machines to even tackle the plastic waste in the world, let alone the sludge, the, the food waste, the human waste, and everything in between. So there's going to be a lot of work that has to get done. You, you're a brilliant brilliant engineer you've got a bright future ahead of you and i'm happy to help you and guide you in any way i can thank you man much love and blessings like, to you likewise all right well let's connect offline you get back to your fans here and uh i'm happy to help any way i all can right. my friend. thank you all man all right bye-bye uh thank you uh walk for the badge on instagram thank you i believe your name was jordan